The Denver Broncos versus the Los Angeles Raiders. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Coliseum in downtown Los Angeles, where it is another sweltering day in Southern California. Game time temperature is 95 degrees, almost no wind at the Coliseum whatsoever. So before it's all over, it could be the team that holds up under these extreme conditions best comes out on top. I'm Joel Myers alongside of Madre Shad, two original teams from the old American Football League getting together once again. Broncos have taken three of the four opening day meetings over the last 25, Ahmad. These two better rivals have really played it closely with the Raiders winning 13. They certainly have, Joel, but you know, the Denver Broncos are, no matter what you think, they are the American Conference champions, and they are led by Dan Reeves, and they are at a spot where the Raiders want to get back to be, and they feel like this is an excellent opportunity for Art Shell's Raiders to find out if they're back the way they were a few years ago when they were the defending American Conference champions. Looking right now at the youngest coach in the NFL at 43 years of age. Of course, the youngest head coach in the NFL. On the other side, Dan Reeves, the fourth youngest. Art Shell loves those home games. He was a perfect 6-0 after taking over for Mike Shanahan right here at the Coliseum last year. Starting to date me, Joe, when you talk about these young head coaches. You, you find that you start feeling your age when you have coaches that you played against. And that's the way it is today. I've played against both these fellas. The pride, the confidence, they say, is back with the Los Angeles Raiders. And as Jeff Jager gets it teed up, the Broncos win the opening toss. Al Davis just popped his head in the booth just a couple of minutes ago, Ahmad, and he said, now, Joel and Ahmad, don't be too nervous, even though it's opening day. I said, we're not nervous, Al, and I don't think your guys are either. I think Al may a little, be a little bit nervous, because you never know. He, he said we can speculate as long as we want to, but today we find out just how good we are. Now, Montgomery, Sammy Winder back deep, and the... 89-90, rather the 90 campaign underway for the Denver Broncos. Winder doesn't get to it. It's picked up, I believe, by Mobley, though. I believe Orson Mobley, the tight end down there on the special teams, saved the Denver Broncos from disaster at the outset of the contest. John Elway coming off what the Denver people say was his best preseason, getting 70% of his passes. His offensive line growing in size over the last three years. They're very, very high in particular on the left tackle, Gerald Perry. Humphrey, the offensive rookie of the year in the AFC last year, in the backfield with Elway. Sewell will leave when they go to the extra tight end set. Mobley comes in. First and 10 for the Broncos. Their own 20-yard line for their first series of 1990. Bobby Humphrey on the carry. Good yardage for Humphrey. He gets eight. Defensively, the front four can stack up with the very best of them for the Los Angeles Raiders. Long, Golick, Davis, and Greg Townsend, who has looked sensational over the last couple of preseason games. The strength may be their linebacking group, a very experienced one. Robinson, Ellison, and Tom Benson, a plan B signing last year. And they go to extra defensive backs. The two that will enter the game, Terry McDaniel and Elvis Patterson, the former Giant. Second and short, the delay. Humphrey's got more than enough of the first down. Out to the 35-yard line for Denver. Mike Harden, the former Bronco, making the stop, the strong safety. What you are going to see throughout the course of the day is excellent cutability by Bobby Humphrey. Watch Humphrey find the hole here. He always makes the right decision. He's always inside those blocks. There's a great cut right there, and he's always going forward. He is a very efficient and a great runner and a great, he's got great eyesight. He always finds the right hole. The two carries for Bobby Humphrey and already 15 yards on the ground for the Denver Broncos. And talking to Dan Reeves last night, we were talking that like two old running backs, and we kept saying, as we watch Bobby Humphrey in film, he always makes the right cut. And that's something that you really can't coach. That's an, an instinctive ability that great runners have. Dan Reeves said to us yesterday that Bobby Humphrey did everything, as Ahmad said, on instinct. Now he knows the system. She gained better than 1,100 yards, the first Bronco rookie to ever go to the 1,000-yard mark. First and 10 for Denver. Their own 35-yard line. Elway's first pass attempt of the day is a dump off for Sammy Winder. Makes the first man miss. Still only gets about two on the reception. Very, Gary Lewis, the quarterback, coming up. Very nice play by Sammy Winder, who's been around a long time, but he's still a very effective running back. 
caught that ball on the run, made that first tackler miss, and still got a couple of yards. Sammy's in his ninth year from Southern Mississippi. So call it second and a long eight now. For Elway in the Denver offense. But the defending two minutes gone by in the first 15 minutes of play at the Coliseum. Deep drop for Elway and good protection as his tight end K drops the ball. Clarence K, the center of a lot of attention over the last couple of weeks surrounding his eligibility. Some were wondering if he was a third-time offender being cited for impaired driving in June. But Clarence Kane and his attorneys feel that no action will be taken. And he is still waiting for a decision, a ruling for Paul Tagliabue that should be forthcoming in the next week or two. That's a pretty heavy burden on a young man like that. I think he'd rather have something be decided and then go on rather than have it be up in limbo. Four wide receivers for the Broncos. Advance Johnson in motion on third and eight from their own 37. Elway. Average better than five a carry last year, and he's got the first down for Denver. All the way to the L.A. 49-yard line on the 14-yard scramble. John Elway is nothing more than a single-wing tailback in that situation. you got a guy big, strong, fast like that that can throw the ball the way he can. Most quarterbacks, when you make them run, they're at a disadvantage. In Elway's case, once he starts running, he's like a halfback in open field, and he will not hesitate to pick up that yardage on his own, and you notice he doesn't do a lot of that slide, and he'll try to punish somebody when they come to tackle him. First and 10 for the Broncos in Raider territory at the Los Angeles 49-yard line. And holds up well again for Elway. He's got his tight end wide open for another first down to the 33-yard line of Los Angeles. And it's Clarence K. in his seventh year from Georgia, going at 6'2", 237. A big confidence builder for Clarence K. First of all, he comes out just a couple plays before and drops the ball. And Elway showing his confidence in K. Comes right back to him and puts it right there and Kate picks it up and makes a couple extra yards. I asked Dan Reeves yesterday if it's been a distraction, all the attention surrounding Clarence K. He said maybe for Clarence, but it hasn't been. That type of distraction for the rest of the team. Impressive start for the Broncos offensively. First and ten, Bobby Humphrey trying to cut it back and does a good job to get it down to the 30-yard line for a gain of about three when it looked like he'd be stopped in the backfield. Finally, he's knocked down by Howie Long. Steve Sewell, the lead blocker on this play, number 30. Now, Sewell is a sort of a player that can play any position. They've got him playing fullback this year. And watch, he, well, he puts a little arm out there and tries to catch the guy. If you can't block him, you just throw your arm out there and try to get him. Howie Long, forcing down, getting blocked very well, but keeps pursuing after the runner. Wilder, the only one in the backfield on second and seven from the 30. Elway on play action is in trouble and is going down. Back at the 36 for a loss of six. Great outside pressure from Greg Townsend. And Archell told us his main responsibility is making sure that the containment is not broken by Elway. Well, the one of the things you don't want to do when you're trying to play against a quarterback like John Elway is let him get outside. Because once he gets outside, he still has the full range of the field because he's got such a strong arm. He can throw from one side of the field all the way over to the other. It, most quarterbacks, once they get outside the end, they can only throw to that side of the field. But with Elway, it just opens up the entire field. And Townsend, uh, his responsibility is to not let Elway get outside, and he did that very well at last play. Four wideouts for Elway on third and 13 from the Raider 36. Elway out of the shotgun, delivering, and it's dropped by his wide receiver. Vance Johnson usually hangs on to everything in his neighborhood. That time, though, he felt the pressure of Mike Harden, his former teammate. There's a couple of old buddies that have probably run a million patterns against each other. Mike Harden with the Broncos before he came here with the Raiders. But this, pa this ball's got to be caught. I think what happened, Vance tried to catch the ball and make a turn back inside before he had a, a handle on him. It just got right through his fingers. A fine play there by Mike Harden, who was right on top of it. Mike Horan. Seventh year out of Long Beach State. The punt for the first time today for Denver. After a very successful drive, stalls at the 36 of L.A. Horan tried to angle it towards the sideline, and it looks like he did get it out of bounds. The line's been walking up. This is what Horan did so well last year. He was exceptional at getting the ball inside the 20. This time, all the way back inside the 10. So the first offensive series of the year for the L.A. Raiders, it'll start when we return at their own eight-yard line. 
Welcome back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles today where game time temperature is 95 degrees. Joel Myers along with the Bob Rashad. Those black jerseys for the Raiders. Any difference wearing black on a day like today? Well, you know, it's always hotter on the losing side of the field. I don't think the jerseys make any difference, but for these blue jackets we have on, they're taking a toll on me. It is hot out here, Joel. Coming into the game today, the Raiders felt very strongly about their offensive line where they're very deep and on the other side, defensively a little thin up front for the Broncos. Well, you know... In a game like this, it really takes a toll on the bigger players. And if, they, if the Raiders can rotate their offensive line, they will have an advantage over the Denver defensive line. From the 8-yard line, Steve Smith with some breathing room to the 15 for the Los Angeles Raiders. The offensive look this year for the Los Angeles Raiders. Huge group up front, Wisniewski and Montoya, the strength of the offensive line. They're two guards, much stronger at the guard position than the tackle positions for the Raiders. Backfield, they'll use a lot of people besides Mueller and Smith. And speed to burn on the outside, Golf and Fernandez. Maybe one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL. Brown and Holland come in when they go to the four wide out of line. Moving on the line, first mistake of the day with flags up in the air, belongs to the Los Angeles Raiders. Ball start prior to the snap, number 60 offense, still second down. Rory Graves just a little bit ahead of time here. If you watch him, he's a left tackle. You see he jumps way off, which pulls the Vance Mueller behind him and also pulls off the defense. This game is going to settle down a little bit. They're, they're very fired up. This Raider team is ready for this football game. Brings up a second and close to nine situation for Los Angeles with Willie Galt in motion. Again, Steve Smith gets the call. And he's got fresh legs, Ahmad. He did not get into camp because of a contract holdout until the last couple of preseason games. He's tripped up by Mark Mumford. Mumford, one of the linebackers for the Denver Broncos. They are thin up front. Second-year man power starts at the left end. A rookie, a 10th round draft choice at the right end position, Jim Shemansky. Mecklenburg and Fletcher, the strength of the defensive front seven for the Denver Broncos. And Atwater and Smith, strong safeties, both for Denver. Their nickel, the extra backs, Holmes, Robbins, Corrington, and Elliott Smith. Third and short for Los Angeles. And Steve Smith again has the first down for the Raiders. Number 35 getting his number called regularly at the outset of the contest with seven minutes gone by in the first quarter. It's scoreless so far, and it's the first first down of the season for L.A. The Raiders on a day like today with all this heat, if they can amount up a good ground attack, that's the way you really wear down a team on a hot day like this. You just keep pounding and pounding up the middle. It's like in a boxing match where a guy takes a lot of body shots, and at some point in the, during the course of the game, it starts to weaken up the, whole, the entire team. Much more effective on a hot day running than passing. But he backs to rotate for the Los Angeles Raiders with Greg Bell ready to come in as well as Marcus Allen. Schrader with his first pass attempt of the day. To his favorite target, Mike Dial, the tight end. A first down into Denver territory. 29 yards on the completion. He loved to go to Dial during the preseason. And he starts the season that way. I, I got you. There you see Mike Dow over there on the far side, if you can see through my scribbling. But watch him come up the field and then come all the way across up underneath the defense. Here's Dow. He breaks across now. Schrader, very effective, puts that ball right there. Gives his uh, tight end a chance to catch the ball and run. He leads him just a little bit. A very nice shot by Schrader. First and ten, Mueller getting the call and going absolutely nowhere. Stacked up by Warren Powers. <laughs> On the right side of the Denver, the defensive front three. Solid play defensively. This was a much maligned defensive unit, but they turned it all around. Before last year, they were 25th in the league stopping the run. That's why they basically kept Mecklenburg on the inside. Now Dan Reeves feels so strong about his defense, he moves Mecklenburg to the outside for pass rushing capabilities. Yeah, in the past, anytime they felt they had a weakness, the answer to that was put Mecklenburg there. Mecklenburg says, I'm glad I'm playing one position now because all I have to do is study one player, but I'm not so happy because they can run away from me and I'm not involved in, in every play. Well, it's second and nine for the Raiders. Schrader throwing again. Powers almost gets to him. And it's intercepted by Blackston. 
Tyrone Braxton with the interception to the midfield strike for the Denver Broncos. He wanted to go to Smith, who eventually made the tackle. Willie Galt in the same area. Jay Schrader in a little bit of trouble, but shows uh, his quick feet comes out of it. You'll see Willie Galt come all the way across the field. Same pattern that Dial ran. Here comes Willie coming toward us, number 83. And at this point, he sees Woolley, but he's not able to get Braxton. Denver Broncos on first and 10 from the 50, and Mobley are making K. Belgian by the one they call the hitman in the secondary, Eddie Anderson for the Raiders. There are certain things. <laughs> that you don't want to happen when you're running a pass over the middle. And one of them is to have the ball thrown way up high and just leave you stretched out like that. I think Clarence Gay lucky to get up after that pass, especially in, in, in the area by Eddie Anderson, who is a Jack Tatum-like hitter. Play showing how tough he is by bouncing back up, Clarence Gay. Second and 10 at the midfield strike for Elway on his second series of the afternoon. Looked very strong in the first one before it stalled at the Raider 36, heading up the screen. Humphrey can't hang on. Difficult one to bring in for Bobby Humphrey. Plenty of pressure on both the running back and the quarterback. Howie Long getting in there early. A look now at the 10 minute ticker. Chicago shutting out Seattle at home. While the Green Bay Packers comfortably in front of the L.A. Rams. A surprise, somewhat of a surprise, about your old team losing to the Kansas City Chiefs by three. I think Kansas City, a lot of people thought that this was the year they were going to get back and show that they were uh, a real playoff contending team. And by beating the Vikings first week out, I think they're a team that you, that's going to be a contender. And many felt the same about the Detroit Lions with their run-and-shoot offense. But they are pounded by Tampa Bay by 17. Third and 10 now for Elway and the Broncos. Three wide receivers to one side for John. Plenty of time. As a man, and it's just behind Ricky Nateel. Gary Lewis, the rookie cornerback, a seventh-round draft choice for the Raiders out of Alcorn State. Defending in the secondary. Elway now only two of seven in the early going for a total of 18 yards. Boy, if you give Elway that much time to throw the ball, you sort of think that you're in real trouble. The longer he holds that ball, the more you start thinking about that deep bomb. But... The Raiders do an excellent job of containing Elway, keeping him in that pocket, and then do a great job of covering all the lanes downfield. Mike Curran punting it away to the 1987 Heisman Trophy winner. Waiting back deep for the Raiders, Tim Brown. Curran got his first one to go out of bounds at the 8-yard line. This one, though, off the side of his foot, out of bounds, near the 20-yard line. So the former Long Beach State 49er, on his return home, not happy with his second effort. Only a 29-yard punt, and the Raiders will have it once again offensively. This time, better field position when we come back at their own 21, still scoreless in Los Angeles. Someone you will see a great deal of this year on NBC. The Magic, Magic Johnson. The Magic Man. He told me to stand on the sideline. <laughs> he fears for his life hearing that those hits out there. Raiders have it first and set at the 21. Vance Mueller bottled up in the backfield. Good lateral pursuit down the line by the Denver defensive front seven. Let's head to New York now for an update with Bob Costas. Okay, Joel, on Houston's first possession in Atlanta, Lorenzo White fumbled. Falcons recovered at the 50, took it in from there. Drive capped by the six-yard run from their number one draft choice, the rookie running back from Washington State, Steve Broussard. Glanville leads his old mates 7-0 in the first. Back to Joel and Ahmad. All right, Bob, thank you. We know it's difficult duty in those cool, comfortable confines of the studio at 30 <laughs> Rockefeller Plaza. It is only 95 degrees up in the booth at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Could be approaching 105 to 110. Down in the field of play, second and 11. Oh Schrader in trouble. Fletcher almost got him. Fletcher did have him in the grass. Back at the five-yard line. Close to the four, Simon Fletcher and Carl Mecklenburg. Warren Powers also getting in there. But you've got to worry about 73 and 77. Always you end up trying to run away from, from Mecklenburg, who's on the right side, and all you do is run right back into Simon Fletcher, who is a very unheralded defense. But he's a very big fellow. Looks like he could play a down uh, defensive end. But he plays that stand-up linebacker. He can play either place. And he is a force. Seems like he is only getting better in the prime of his career right now. Wants to lead the linebackers in sacks. Carl's on the outside now. Means he's really going to have to get after it. Well, he's taking a pretty good start. He's got one already. 
Six defensive backs in there now for the Broncos on third and long for the Raiders. The delay goes nowhere. Steve Smith belted out of the backfield. Check that. It was Vance Mueller, fifth-year man out of Occidental College. And an extra defensive back. Laid a hit on him. Kip Corrington. Kip Corrington really came in and laid the old leather on him at the end of that play. Got a couple of yards on the carry. A couple more yards for the punter. A couple of more yards and a tremendous headache. So the defensive front three looking strong at the outset, and that was possibly one of the concerns of the Broncos coming into the game. They got the Raiders back in a hole. Gossett punting from his own end zone, and Vance Johnson is back deep in the midfield stripe for the Broncos. For a turnable type for Johnson from the 45. Running through traffic to the 45-yard line. A nifty 12-yard return by Johnson after a 47-yard punt by Jeff Gossett. 251 left in the first quarter. Still no score. Right now, the Denver Broncos have superior field position at the 45 to start their third drive of the day. The LA 45. Bobby Humphrey, can he bounce outside? No, he does not get there. Tom Benson along with Gary Lewis showing good speed. Bobby Humphrey trying to bounce this play outside, but the Raiders doing an excellent job. You know, their defense has played so well during the, the preseason, and if you can have a defense that can play steady like that, they always give you offensive time to get in sync. If they can just hold down these Broncos and give the other, give their offense a chance to get in sync, and talking to Jerry Robinson, he said, we have that, that feeling that we're all flying around trying to hit somebody that we had years ago. Movement on the line. It looked like Scott Davis, a free down coming up for Elway, or Mike Wise, actually. On second and 11, Mark Jackson has it for the first down. To the 25-yard line, the fifth-year man from Purdue. 21 yards on the grab. There are very few quarterbacks anywhere in the world that can throw a ball back right, rolling out left. If you watch Elway here, just a little bootleg out to the, out to the left part of the field. Now watch him throw this ball back behind right on the money. Just a bullet. And there you see Scott Davis just a little bit ahead of time, giving Elway that free play. I'm sure he'll take that completion. I don't know if there's anyone in the history of the game that's been able to throw that ball against the grain, rolling in that direction the way Elway can. And without setting up. He threw it right on the run without stopping his feet. First and ten. Best penetration of the day. And the big hit in the backfield. Howie Long got through. You never know how he's going to turn up. They list him as the starting end, defensive end, but he's all over the defensive front four. He moves around quite a bit, but boy, he was right on this snap count. You would have thought that he was in Denver's huddle right now as quick as he got off that ball. Late game's just getting underway, and what a start for Jerry Glanville and his new team in Atlanta. He's resurrecting that grits blitz that he had down there a few years ago when he was a defensive coordinator. Minute 10. Left in the first 15 minutes of play. Second, just about 13 for Elway. Going deep, he has his tight end open. Touchdown, no! It's yanked away from Clarence K by Jerry Robinson. It was there. K had to wait just a little bit on the ball, though. It was just a great play by Jerry Robinson, who was obviously beat on the play, but the wily veteran, I hate to call anybody like that because it makes him sound old, but watch this play. He knows he's beat. He watches the ball going to Clarence's arm, and he pulls it out at the last minute. That's just a great play by Jerry Robinson. Important to be Denver, the defending AFC champions. Jerry Robinson told us they've been talking about Denver since five weeks ago, their first preseason game over in London. John Elway thought that that last play was a touchdown. Actually, he, I think he threw his hands up before Clarence Clay came down on the ground. Dan Reeves was telling us yesterday that John Elway came into camp as prepared as he has ever been. And this is eighth season out of Stanford. Said he really worked hard during the offseason. He had 70% of his preseason passes, only had one picked off, and that was in the final game against the Phoenix Cardinals. I think we're just seeing the, the maturation. He's maturing as, as, a, as a person and, not, and as a quarterback because he just seems so relaxed now. I talked to him before the game, and he, he's just a much more relaxed and more effective quarterback, and that means trouble for anybody in the league if he's more effective. 
Third down and 13. Well, they waste this great field position. Elway out of the shotgun, calls his own number on the quarterback draw. And he can't get the first down, only with a 25. The cornerback, Elvis Patterson, was keeping the play inside. Elway appeared to want to go outside with it and was deliberating the indecision cost him. Eddie Anderson finally made the hit. What the Broncos were trying to do was take advantage of the tremendous pass rush of the L.A. Raiders and try to let all the rush go by and then let Elway take off running through the middle of the field. But the Raiders, as you say, Elvis Patterson was waiting for him. David Treadwell from the 42, the 32. It's a 42-yard attempt, and it's good. And the first points of the season come from the young man who led the AFC in scoring last year. He was also named to the Pro Bowl in his second year out of Clemson. David Treadwell with a 42-yard field goal. So they do not waste the great field position, starting their drive at the L.A. 45-yard line. Elway, though, would have preferred this seven. He thought he had it on that long pass to Clarence K. Asked Dan Reeves yesterday if he got any advice from Mike Ditka regarding the situation he experienced just a few weeks back, the heart ailment where he had a blockage in his arteries. Said he did not receive any advice, but feels better than ever. All right, here you see that uh, next to the last play. You see this hard rush by Townsend up there, and Elway will take the ball and come inside and try to get up the field that way. The big hard rush by Townsend outside. Elway tries to go underneath, but here comes Elvis Patterson and Eddie Anderson, and they just have it uh, bottled up. So the defending AFC champion. It went 11 and 5 during the regular season last year while the LA Raiders were 8 and 8. Take a 3 to nothing lead. The final minute of play in the first quarter. Treadwell will kick it away. A combination of Jamie Holland to your left, Ron Brown to your right. Plenty of speed for the Los Angeles Raiders. They can put together quite a track team with Grady, Brown, and Galt. Brown, a great wide receiver and kick returner for many years for the Los Angeles Rams. It'll be Jamie Holland, though, in his own goal line. Good kick coverage. She's penned in inside the 20, only back to the 16-yard line. Anthony Thompson, the first one down there for the Denver Broncos. So it's the third series for Jay Schrader and the Raider offense. And they have not enjoyed the field position they would desire at the outset of the contest. They started the first drive back at their eighth or second of the 21. This time outside of their own 16. Traders already thrown one interception. If you've just joined us, it was picked off by Tyrone Braxton, the cornerback for the Denver Broncos. Broncos, though, with good field position so far in the first quarter, really haven't capitalized on the situation. Schrader for Willie Galt, and Galt got it outside of the 20 to the 23 on the final play of the first quarter. So when we come back, the Raiders, deep in their own territory, trailing by three. So welcome back to the Coliseum. Joel Myers along with the Bob Rashad. Well, that thing, uh, the thing about that is it only cools off the players that are on the bench. Second and short. Second and three for the Raiders from their own 23. Great Bell, his first carry of the season. And he's close to the first down. Not totally unexpected. A little pushing and shoving. Warren Powers, the combatant for the Denver Broncos. Carl Mecklenburg playing right in number 77. Says if they can run away from me all the time, that's the only thing I don't like. But watch him pursue this play. All the way from the right side, he makes a tackle on a play that goes off the guard opposite him. Mecklenburg is just an all-around force. And a guy that gave these Raiders a lot of concern coming into this game. Jerry Obiski said, we, you know, we want to try to run away from him, but if we do that, we run into Simon Fletcher. If we run at him, he's, just, he's a guy that we've really got to, you know, we got to watch out for. First quarter numbers almost identical, third and inches. And the first down is picked up by Greg Bell. He's in his seventh year from Notre Dame. Led the Rams in rushing in each of the last two seasons. Updating those scores once again in the 10-minute ticker. An impressive start for Jerry Glanville. And his debut as the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. Miami with a couple of field goals. Only down by a point now to the Patriots. San Diego and Dallas are tied up in the first. Great matchup. You see Indianapolis Buffalo tied 
Also Pittsburgh, Cleveland, two teams that are old, old rivals as well. Getting together on the opening week of the season just like the Broncos and the L.A. Raiders. First and ten for Los Angeles. They're on 31-yard line. Play action for Jace Raider. Moving the pocket, Fernandez with the completion, but a short game. Wyman Henderson on the coverage, along with Tyrone Braxton. Mervin Fernandez is a big play receiver, and a little play like this is something that keeps your confidence going, keeps your offense going, even though it was five or six yards. It's a plus play. Makes it 31 straight. Swervin Mervin Fernandez, as he is called here in Los Angeles. His wife, Brenda, is expecting a baby any day now. Second and five at the 36-yard line for the Raiders. Steve Smith this time carrying tackler to the 39-yard line for a gain of three. Greg Cragen making the hit up the middle for Denver. I'm very concerned about Mecklenburg. Watch this. Ah, oh, we got a little bit of grabbing and holding there. I guess if you can't block him, you got to hold him. <laughs> when you're as good as Mecklenburg, you got to expect to get held every now and then. Working up against Rory Graves, the left tackle out of Ohio State for the Raiders. Rory had him wrapped up that last play. A third and short situation for the Raiders, this time at their own 39-yard line. They need to push it past the 41. Bell stays in there with the tailback. Schrader trying to get him to jump off sides with a long count. It doesn't work, but Bell with second effort gets the first down to the 42 yard line well, earlier today on nfl live the discussion centered around mike ditka possibly retiring this year if the bears win the super bowl will mcdonough feels the ditka parcells and gibbs may be in the final year of coaching and buddy ryan will get a new contract from norman brayman well, al davis according to will mcdonough will make a decision on the raiders home whether it'll be la or oakland within the next couple of weeks has to be pleased with the work of his defensive unit so far, but the offensive unit staggering in this heat in Los Angeles. Al is only pleased if they win the Super Bowl. Steve Smith signs the game behind that big offensive line to the 47-yard line. Carl Mecklenburg, you just can't watch a Denver game or watch a Denver defense without talking about Carl. Carl Mecklenburg, watch this. He rushes up the field to try to rush the passer, but he never stops his pursuit angle. He just keeps going and going. And playing out at that right end spot, it's hard to make a tackle that goes up the middle. He said that he didn't like, and one of the things he didn't like about being outside was that he wasn't involved in every play. Well, that's quite the contrary here today. Solid second and a long five. Bell goes in motion to lead the blocking for Smith. And the former Nittany Lion from Penn State doesn't get much. He's to the 49-yard line, and that is it. Simon Fletcher, the outside linebacker on the opposite side, getting Smith. Simon Fletcher, if you go right to get Fletcher, you go left to get Mecklenburg. These are two impact players on this Denver Bronco team. They're the strength of the Broncos defensive unit. There's no doubt about that. Sam Grady, Jim Brown into the contest now for the Los Angeles Raiders. Three wide receivers for Schrader. On third and three from the 49. The Scribes try to back to their own 16-yard line. Movement on the line. It looked like they got the man on the nose to jump off. Ron Holmes. Mecklenburg also in early. Was there movement, though? Ron Holmes just signed this past week. Former number one draft choice, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A long holdout for the Denver Broncos. Came over in a deal with Tampa Bay before the start of last season for a fourth-round draft choice. False start prior to the snap, number 60 offense. Still third down. Rory Graves and Mecklenburg, I think, maybe tried to psych him up a little bit, but watch his, watch his, right, watch his right hand. Just a little bit. He's ready to go. And you see that little move by Roy Graves, number 60, and Mecklenburg just takes off on that, and he gets the call. So the five-yard assessment goes against the Raiders, their second mark off of the day. Four wide receivers will stay in there for Jay Schrader and the Raiders. And Marcus Allen is the single set in the backfield, his first play of the season. Marcus also a holdout 
during the preseason. Pocket collapsing on Schrader, and Schrader goes down. Ron Holmes coming straight up the middle with the sack. The second sack of the day for the Denver Broncos. Simon Fletcher had the first. The Broncos put so much pressure on the outside with Fletcher and Mecklenburg that, it, that allows Holmes. It forces the quarterback to stay inside, and then Holmes comes right up the middle and makes the play. Expect him to do really well early on. He hasn't been in camp, as you mentioned earlier. So he's got those fresh legs early. We saw that for the Raiders in that preseason game about a couple of weeks ago when Greg Townsend had just reported to camp. Had all those sacks on that Friday night against Chicago Soldier Field. What we didn't know was Greg Townsend had been down in Houston working out with a guy named Tom Williams twice a day in that heat. Matt Johnson staying away from the Wadler off the foot of Jeff Gossett. It's out of bounds. And when we get back, Denver will have it with a three-point lead. After only a 38-yard punt, they'll have it at their 25-yard line. Bob Golick told us yesterday he considers himself a stealth lineman because he moves around so quickly that no one can see him. We'll see if that applies this afternoon as we welcome you back to the Coliseum. The big defensive lineman for the L.A. Raiders. Right now the Broncos with it first and 10 of their own 25 with the leg. Doesn't fool anyone with Steve Sewell out of the backfield. No gain on the carry. Craig Townsend knifing through to make the hit. Well, how does Bob Golick feel about his position? Well, he said if you're mad at your kid, you either raise him to be a nose tackle or send him out to play on the freeway. Just about the same. Nice approach to the position by Bob Golick. He is a treat to be around, and we talked to the Raider coaches. He's turned out to be a team leader. Fun player to have on the team. He's coming over from the Cleveland Browns. Also likes to think of himself as a nose backer. Loves to go in coverage occasionally. He's definitely a free spirit. Elway throwing on second and ten, and it's way wide of the intended target. That may have been intentional. Sewell pretty well blanketed by Mike Harden. And Greg Townsend applying pressure in the backfield. Another look at scores around the NFL on this first Sunday of the season. A dominating performance so far by the Atlanta Falcons. And Cincinnati scoring against their former offensive coordinator, the New York Jets head coach Bruce Goslett. Elway now 3 of 10 for a total of 39 yards, throwing on third and almost 11. Pocket holds up. Going for Michael Young. Did he get both feet in? No. Bronco fans affectionately have a place in their heart for Young, remembering that big 70-yard touchdown catch in the AFC title game last year. Michael Young. Oh, that's awful close. Tough call. An old ex receiver. I think he <laughs> might have been in on that one. Because he certainly caught it right in his hands. There was no juggling at all. You need a Pro Bowl reputation to get that call. Make it to the Pro Bowl one year, then maybe you get the call next year. Denver's used to timeout with Mike Oran on to punt. Maybe they're trying to send a message to the official. Please go upstairs and review that play. It doesn't appear to be the case. We'll be right back with the Coliseum in Los Angeles with L.A. ready to get the ball back. Mike Oran set to punt it away for the Denver Broncos with Tim Brown waiting back for the Raiders. He's on 35-yard line. And an effective punt by Oran. Bobbled. Did Montgomery get down there to make the recovery? Does Denver have it? Yes, Elton Montgomery on the fumble recovery for the Denver Broncos. He's a rookie from the University of Houston. Tim Brown just lost his ball, misplayed it. Watch it go over his shoulder at that point. Once that ball bounces on the ground, your chances of getting it are about nil because you have no idea which way it's going to bounce. Meanwhile, you got all kind of white jerseys flying in front of you, and it's just a great play by the Denver Broncos to come up with that ball. Coaches told us yesterday, out in Montgomery, the one that flies around everywhere on the special teams. His hustle really paid off. The delay for Bobby Humphrey. He is belted by Tom Benson. A loss of a yard back to the 27. Tom Benson is a big hitter. Here Elway trying to hand the ball underneath and Benson right in the hole. 
they want to just contain Bobby Humphrey. And Benson, <laughs> Hintley Benson gets so psyched up, he wants to knock people out when he hits you. Because that's the natural attitude for a linebacker. Second and 11. Elway on the short drop. Going behind his tight end. When you talk about intensity, Ricky Ellison, number 50, is just like Benson. And Steve Sewell. It's too hot to fight, for one thing. It's hot enough to try to play football. You want to try to fight. It's way too hot. Now, there's Ricky Ellison, number 50. They call him the vampire linebacker because he gets so fired up and he's drooling and chopping his feet and everything. The Raiders always seem to have a guy like that. They had Matt Millen earlier. Now they have Ricky Ellison. Four wide receivers in the game for Elway, who's only 3 of 12. He's missed his last four straight. Third and 11, pocket collapsing. Unloads it, and it's almost dropped and almost picked off as it is dropped. Gary Lewis scrambling over as Vance Johnson couldn't hang on. It's a couple we've seen drop now. Vance Johnson, fourth in the ASC in reception last year with 76, dropping two in the early going today. He sees John Elway looking all the way at Vance Johnson, puts the ball just a little bit high, but Vance being the receiver that he is, I think he feels like he should have caught that ball. From There's the 34. It'll be a 44-yard attempt by David Treadwell. Out of the hold of Kubiak. It's got the distance, does it have the direction? Yes, and Treadwell. Two for two so far this afternoon on the 44-yard field goal. 6.49 left in the first half, a 6 to nothing Denver lead. As we get ready for the kickoff from Treadwell, back deep, Ron Brown, along with Jamie Holland. It'll be Holland taking it from inside his own five. And blockers out in front for the former San Diego Charger with a flag down in the play. Flags down to the plate. Holland down as well. Just short of the 34-yard line. But flags way back at the 25, and it's going to go against Los Angeles. Jerry Seaman, our referee, working today's contest. 6.38 left in the first half, a 6 to nothing Denver lead. Holding during the return, number 88 receiving team, first down. Boy, Dan Turk, number 67, just put Elliott Smith, number 28, on his back on that play. And there's the culprit in the holding, Ethan Horton. The Raiders still unable to start these drives. They keep starting too deep in their own territory. This is back at their 16-yard line. Their previous three possessions starting to throw an 8, 21, and 16-yard lines. Steve Berline, who just signed a couple of weeks ago with the Los Angeles Raiders, one of their two inactives. They have a two-week exemption when somebody is signed that late. Now, they will determine later next week whether or not they want to use both weeks for Steve Berline, but he is in his civvies today on the sideline. The backup quarterback for the LA Raiders is Vince Evans, the former USC Trojan. Malfunction down in the field with some of the technical equipment. That's not an official there in that Hawaiian shirt, is it? <laughs> I like the garb if it is. <laughs> he certainly got the right idea. All we're missing today are the trade winds. We've got the heat like we're on the islands. Raiders come out with Steve Smith and Greg Bell in the backfield. Trailing by six. So the play clock is the problem. It is not functioning right now. The Raiders come out first and 10 of their own 16. Steve Smith with breathing room for the 22. Let's head to New York once again and an update from Bob Costas in the studio. Joel in Atlanta, it's a Jerry Glanville fantasy. Home debut, sellout crowd against his old team, the Oilers, and doing it the way he likes his teams to, with aggressive defense. This looked like one where the whistle might have blown, but even Jesse Tuggle of Atlanta wasn't sure. They said, keep on going. It is a Warren Moon fumble. Atlanta forced fumbles the first three times Houston had the ball. One set up a TD, the other two were returned for scores. 21-0 Falcons. Thank you, Bob. Second and four, the cutback runner, Greg Bell. 
and I mentioned earlier that these Raiders are going to go to the no huddle offense, and that's exactly what they've gone to now. And it's not, it's not a, there's Steve Berline. Looking rather cool on the sideline. Sorry. But it's not, as you can see, it's not a hurry up offense. It's just a no huddle offense, and it keeps the same 11 players in the defense in the game. Schrader with time. Throwing it away. His receiver slipped down, broken the pattern, Willie Galt. And you knew it would develop before long because Jay Schrader was not exactly accepted by Raider fans last year. They really took to Steve Berline. On the top side of the view, you see Steve Berline working one-on-one, -on -one and he's open a little bit late. <laughs> Gotta be frustrating. And Mervin Fernandez shows his exasperation. Second and ten now. Out of the 26 for LA. Over the middle, Steve Smith hung out to drive by his quarterback, Michael Brooks. Applying the hit, the inside linebacker. This Raider offense is a big play offense, and they have not had but one big play. The the pass to Mike Dow early on in the game, as you look at Jerry Robisky, who handles the play calling of this greater offense, but they've got to go downfield. That's what they want to do. They want to come deep at you and put the pressure on you right now, and they haven't done that at all. Third and ten, Tim Brown in the game. Maybe they will do it. It's Ethan Horton, the tight end. He's right at the first down marker at a yard beyond, so he does pick up the first down on the toss from Jay Schrader. Ethan Horton, is, Horton has done an incredible job to work his way back into the NFL. A former first-round pick of the Chiefs is a running back in 85. Bulked up and is now a tight end for the Raiders. He's been caught a couple of times by L.A., but really persevered. First down to the 37-yard line. Jay Schrader only completed 43% of his passes during the preseason. Take it a step further. Last year, only 44% of his passes were completed. He started nine of the games for Los Angeles. Steve Smith bowling his way for good yardage. Showing patience, too, to the 43. Injured Bronco down is Mark Mumford, one of the most active linebackers. One of the best special teams players as well in his fourth year from Nebraska. Hopefully it is not of the serious nature. We'll find out when we come back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Mark Mumford, the linebacker, injured. They're looking at his left leg right now. Lower area around the knee for the Denver Broncos. Second, just about four for Schrader. Pocket holds up. He's got time and has Fernandez for a first down to the 34-yard line. One of the few times around they've really looked far downfield. Well, now you're getting a chance to see this vertical offense that you hear about these Raiders. They like to go down the field. Here's Mervyn Fernandez. This is about a 22-yard pattern. He just breaks in, and Schrader hits him right off of his cut. Great catch there with his hands. There you see Mervyn Fernandez. He's going to run down here and bring the pass in here. Schrader will drop back and hit him right on the cut. There you go. Nice catch in the hands. First and ten of the Denver 34, Willie Galt. Delivered a crushing blow, could not hang on. It's an incomplete. Pass on the attempt from Schrader. Wyman Henderson. Galt had to step up that ladder, really got underneath him. One of the safest times as a wide receiver is when you jump because you have no resistance. It's tough when your both feet are on the ground. That's when you have some resistance going forward, and the defensive back has resistance uh, it coming with that force at you. Then the collisions are a lot bigger. But when you're up off the ground, there's there's no force. You see Willie Galt? See it? That's that's just like messing around in the backyard. That doesn't hurt. Second and ten now for the Raiders inside the 35 of Denver. Hernandez in motion. And again, no pressure on Schrader. Coming late now up the middle. Schrader's in the grasp, and he's down. They call him in the grasp. And he's sacked back by Greg Cragen. Forget about the completion to Mike Dial. They've got him back at the 41-yard line. J. 
Jay Schrader obviously in the grass. He showed you how strong his arm, his arm is. Watch him get wrapped up here by Craig and still get this ball up. This is a long throw. That's all arm. It's also third down. Third sack of the afternoon for the Denver Broncos. Holmes with one, Powers with one, or actually Holmes with one, Fletcher, and now Greg Cragen. And a timeout has been called. Two minutes and 55 seconds left in the first half. We'll be right back to see what the Raiders do on third and long, trailing by six. Timeouts remaining for the two teams. And a real blow to the Denver defense. We just learned that Mark Mumford has received a sprain to the left knee and may not be able to return this afternoon. Vance Mueller, the only one in the backfield for the Raiders. On third and long. Third, close to 16. Trader going deep. And it's almost intercepted by Dennis Smith. Mervin Fernandez, the intended target. Good timing by Smith. This is a tough ball to catch. You see the ball up in the air. The receiver does Mervin Fernandez. And he also can feel Dennis Smith coming across. He doesn't know if Dennis Smith's going to go for him or the ball. That's a ball that Dennis Smith will thinks he should have caught him. And maybe he should have caught it. But if he would have caught it, maybe he'd be a wide receiver. Broncos have called the timeout before the punt of Jeff Gossett. When we talked to Dan Reeves yesterday, I asked him about Dennis Smith and what the emergence of Steve Atwater has meant to his career because a couple of years ago, even three seasons ago, it seems like at times they were picking on Dennis Smith. Well, it's turned out that Atwater has been good for Smith and Smith has been good for Atwater. They've really played off each other very well. Almost like they brought energy and enthusiasm to each other in their play in the secondary. Jeff Gossett in to punt it away as Vance Johnson waits for the Broncos back at his own 10-yard line. Two minutes and 48 seconds left in the first half. Angling it for the sideline. Does he get it out of bounds inside the five? Yes, he does. Great effort by Gossett. Bending the Broncos back at their own three-yard line. A 37-yard kick. Finals now on this opening Sunday of the season. A shutout to the Bears. Green Bay. Trailing early came from behind to beat the Rams. It's that final we were just talking about. Kansas City by three at home. One of the biggest surprises, Tampa Bay. Easily beating Detroit. And another whitewash for the Washington Redskins. A dream come true for Jerry Glanville. And New England pulling away early from Miami. That has to be considered a surprise. Bell in the offense operating from back of the run three-yard line. Bobby Humphrey does a good job to get back to the three. So we are winding our way down to the two-minute warning. The Broncos with one timeout remaining in the first half. Broncos, though, in the second quarter have yet to pick up a first down, even though they have the only score so far in the second quarter. Here, no one took anything out of his backyard after he took over for Mike Shanahan. The Raiders had a perfect 6-0 record at home. You don't let someone come in and chase you around in your own backyard. Really emphasized that yesterday in talking to us over the Raiders camp in El Segundo. It's a quiet confidence about this team since Archell has taken over. Much looser group. They're playing off a lot of positives in camp. Their best preseason since 1977. They were four and one during the preseason. The Broncos coming off a three and two preseason mark. Which neither one of those counted. Now it's for the real thing. You got it. Exactly two minutes left in the first half. Denver operating on second and ten from their own three. So many of the players believe it. Barchell will get to that in just a second. False start prior to the snap. Center. 
To what extent do they believe in Archell? Jerry Robinson would follow him anywhere. To war, Ahmad. A lot of confidence because of Archell. And there he was just talking to the former general manager of the San Diego Chargers. He's back to the Raiders now, Steve Hortmeyer. Second and long after the penalty. Elway throwing it to Vance Johnson, not close. Here you're going to watch, just watch how quick Howie Long is off the ball. His first step, he's already passed the guy in front of him. He's got to have help. You cannot block Howie Long with one man. He has not lost any quickness since the day he came into this league. And he just is a nightmare for anybody trying to block him. He's so persistent. Minute 54 left in the first half. The Raiders have not had to use their final timeout. Clock stopping on the incompletion. Elway almost not prepared for that snap out of the shotgun. Johnson doesn't have a prayer. That would have been overthrown had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar been the wide receiver on that pattern. Gary Lewis defending him in the play. And good pressure again. One of the things that always amazes me as I watch these big fellas move, Howie Long is just, you know, not only quick but powerful. If he doesn't get around you with quickness, he goes over you with power. One of the premier defensive linemen in all of football. Not much room for the punter to work with. Let's see if the Raiders come up with a big play on the special team. Mike Horan. Punting it to Tim Brown. Just barely gets it away and sends out a beauty. High spiral that Brown will take back at his own 45. And again, Alton Montgomery, the first one down there on the special teams for the Denver Broncos. Cottering Tim Brown after a 54-yard punt by Haram and only a seven-yard return. Raiders getting the back with one timeout to work with. A minute 37 left on the first half clock. And they get it at the Denver 48-yard line. The first time they have started to drive today in Denver territory. Mueller, the only one in the backfield, gets it. An interesting call. Stacked up at the 44. Dennis Smith in the secondary, along with Scott Curtis, who is filling in now with the injured Mark Mumford. Second and six now. Inside the Denver 45. Trader with ample time. Over the middle, golf can't hang on. Well-timed hit by Wyman Henderson. Willie Galt with a breaking pattern over the middle. And Schrader putting that ball just so he could make the catch. And Willie not able to hang on to us. Watch Willie driving on the defensive back. Little out movement comes across the middle. And watch the ball arrive just before the defender. That's got to be a catch. Got to catch that one. You have to make plays in a big play offense. Third and a long six for the Raiders. In Denver territory. Schrader again with time and a wide open. Tim Brown drops it. Brown got behind Tyrone Braxton. That is five drops now by the Los Angeles Raiders. Jay Schrader cannot do any better than he's done in the last three throws, last two throws. This ball here to Tim Brown, nobody around him just gets right through his hands. The only thing he could do better is run the ball out there and hand it to him, which is illegal. But I know Tim Brown knows he should have caught that ball. He's not having a, a great day at this point. He's already dropped the punt early on and then just dropped that big pass. you got to have these big plays. The, the Raider offense is predicated on making the big plays. Vance Johnson calling for the fair catch has it cleanly. Back at his eight-yard line on the punt from Jeff Gossett. So the Raiders 
waste their best field position of the day starting that last drive at the Denver 48-yard line. And now, don't forget, Denver has one timeout remaining with that 6 to nothing lead. And still plenty of time with a quarterback like John Elway. Trying to keep that confidence level up, aren't they, Ahmad? Well, you can be upset with yourself for dropping a pass, but you just got to get over it. We've got a lot of time to play here, and he'll have another opportunity. And I think that what Fernandez, being the veteran that he is, is telling him, hey, you'll get another shot. There's nothing you can do to get that one back. Elway playing it safe on the pitch to Bobby Humphrey. Good pursuit down the line by the front seven of the L.A. Raiders. It's a gain out the 11-yard line. Howie Long, one of the first ones in there. So it's obvious the Denver Broncos are content because of the field position they're in right now. Back around their own 10-yard line to take it into the locker room with a six-point lead. Only the first 30 minutes of the season for the Denver Broncos and the L.A. Raiders. But on the positive side of it, the defense has been outstanding for both teams. Well, I don't think it's been so much as timing. They've been dropping balls. The timing's there. They've been wide open. I guess you gotta, you got to catch the ball. Six to nothing lead at halftime for the Denver Broncos. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles where the Denver Broncos, the defending AFC champions, have a six to nothing lead over the Los Angeles Raiders. It has been a day dominated so far by the two defensive units. Both quarterbacks, for the most part, looking out of sync. Schrader started to come on a little bit over the final five minutes of the first half, but then all of a sudden we saw a ton of drop balls by the L.A. Raiders. Now the two teams head into the halftime locker room. Joel Myers along with the Mavra shot. What is going on at this point in the halftime locker room? Well, I think what, what at the halftime locker room, they just want to get half to half better play. Both teams need to play a little bit better, but what you're seeing is a Denver team who is a champion. They know how to win, and they at least got some points up on the board. In terms of the Raiders, they just, like I said earlier, they have no continuity to their offense and if you're a big play offense you must make big plays Denver has kept them from doing that therefore they're leading the game six nothing and there was some concern when we talked with Archell yesterday regarding his offense and in particular the passing attack he felt pretty solid about his running game of mine but didn't have that same encouragement when we talked about the pass well there's no way that you can coach catching the football and Art knows that better than anything the only thing you can do is provide protection for your quarterback give him time to throw the ball with Schrader as had time it's just that they have not made that big play and I, I expect that to change you just got to keep going back to trying to do the things that you want to do to win a game and that's throw the ball down the field it is somewhat surprising though as Ahmad pointed out when you watch 30 minutes of Los Angeles Raider football and you don't see a post pattern well maybe not so much a post pattern but even the little short ones that they got to throw you got to catch those because those are things that keep your offense anytime you can do something offensively that is positive even little things it goes into the big scheme of things and it, it enables you to come up with a big play they haven't been able to do it and give a lot of credit to the defensive front for the Los Angeles Raiders because Bobby Humphrey has not been able to get off in the early going as well for the Broncos but when we talked about the Broncos knowing how to win they still have put some points up on the board and I, I expect to see both teams really unleash it and get going in the second half but you sound like Jerry Robinson because Jerry Robinson said they do know how to win and for the LA Raiders to be successful they've got to go through Denver I sound like Jerry Robinson <laughs> <laughs> they do have to go through Denver I mean Denver you know a lot of people think about the Broncos as a team that's lost in the Super Bowl, but not many people realize or know what it takes to get to that Super Bowl. The Broncos do. And talking about the Super Bowl, Carlo Mecklenburg mentioned to us yesterday, there is really no residual lingering effect from that blowout of 55-10 to 10 loss to the San Francisco 49ers. They're a week-to-week -week team, and they're very positive. In football, there is no carryover for anything. Even if you win the Super Bowl, you get to celebrate for a while, but once the season starts, it's wide open. It is wide open again, but the teams you got to give credit, the ones that are always around the top, and the Broncos are one of those teams. For many seasons, the AFC West has been considered a weak link in the AFC. Recently, though, now, with the emergence of the LA Raiders, Bobby Beathard moving down as the GM of the San Diego Chargers, things are looking to appear on the rise right now. Well, the thing about Beathard is he can't play, though. That's the thing. <laughs> I mean, it probably looks good in the front office, but you got to get out of the field and do it, and that's what the Raiders have to do if they want to get back to where they were early on in the 70s. Defensively, the Raiders looking like the old Raiders, at least on that side of the line. That old aggressive intimidation, hard-hitting attack. Playing very physical football. Now we'll find out in the second half if they can generate some points on the board. The secondary doing a good job at the early going for the Denver Broncos. 
Jamie Holland back deep along with Ron Brown, the former Olympic sprinter. As Treadwell gets into it and the second half is underway at the Coliseum. It'll be taken by Holland at the 11. And he's brought down to the 30-yard line. Randy Robbins, the reserve safety, making that hit on the special teams as we look at the first half numbers. As you look at those numbers, I guess the only thing that jumps up on you, which is not there, is just the score. Basically, the Raiders have been, been able to rush the ball 62 yards as opposed to the Broncos 33. And they've thrown the ball 108 yards to 67 for the Broncos. But like I say, the, the big statistic is the score, and that has Denver in the lead 6 nothing. Marcus Allen, only one of the backfields, so very little time in the first half, and it's skipped into the breadbasket of Mervin Fernandez by Jay Schrader. That's a pass that Schrader would like to have back. Just the ball faded away. You see Fernandez, just a little slant pattern, timing route. The ball bounces just before it gets to him. It's just a little route that you run down, and you just kind of break in between the cornerback and the safety and expect the ball in stride. Schrader at five drops. When you look at those numbers, five of 13 for 75. Throwing once again on second and 10. Trying to set up the screen. Allen on the reception, breaking the tackle and picking up the first down. Across the 40 to the 42. We have talked about all around running backs. Marcus Allen is one of the best in the business at running, blocking, receiving, and making something happen. Just a little screen pass to the left. Marcus, watch him use the blocker in front of him. He waits and then takes off to the outside and picks up all the other yardage on his own. Marcus had a bit of a muscle pull during training camp and didn't get a lot of playing time, but the Raiders say it didn't matter. We know what Marcus can do. First and 10 for the Raiders, their own 42, the delay to Marcus Allen. Shooter bugging his way to the outside. Big yardage for Allen to the secondary. All the way to the Denver 30-yard line near the 29, a gain of 29. Marcus Allen, who does not have the blazing speed, knows this field so well. This ball, this play was supposed to go inside. He takes it outside, uses blockers very well, and then cuts back across the field. A little slip there, or Marcus would have gone a lot further. But in a big play offense, you got to have a big play player, and Marcus Allen is just that. They spot it at the 30, or it's first and 10 for the Raiders in Bronco territory. Raiders for Willie Goff. Hangs on this time at the 12-yard line. The very same pass play that he tried to throw to Fernandez. Just a little short break-in pattern. You'll see Willie Galt come down. And it's not a hook pattern. It's just a pattern that Willie Galt will use his speed to move the defense back. And then stop right there in the corner. And Schrader put it right there. If he would, if, There's no way he could have dropped that one. I think it probably went halfway through his chest. Wyman Henderson was defending the play. It was good for 18 yards on the completion and very quickly. They started at their own 30. And the Raiders now have it at the Broncos' 12-yard line. Allen gets the call. Gets a block to the outside. Atwater, the last form of containment, pulls him down to the 9. Marcus Allen has brought some excitement into this crowd. And he seems to be having a little bit of trouble, problems with his footing. A little slip there, but he just has the ability to find a hole, bounce way outside, and keep getting that positive yardage. Tussle going on in Cleveland. Buffalo moving ahead of Indianapolis now as we look at the Hurts 10-minute ticker. New England big over the Dolphins, 21-6. Allen stays in the backfield with Steve Smith. Second and seven from the nine-yard line of Denver. Best penetration of the day for the Raider offense. Allen following Smith. Only a yard. Marcus Allen, who you saw leave the field early in the first half, got ten stitches over his eye, looking a little bit like Mike Tyson. <laughs> You've been on top of the boxing world who got a bunch of stitches over his eye. Marcus back in the ball game now and providing the the punch that's brought this Raider offense down inside the 10-yard line. 
Raiders have had the ball for the first three and a half minutes of the second half. But right now facing third and still a long six, close to seven. Schrader with pressure coming. Finds Dial. Doesn't get the first down. What a hit by Atwater. It's a very good play by Schrader who felt the blitz coming and picked his tight up in right away. You see Schrader get the ball out the dial and Dow trying to get that first down. And here comes Atwater who really unloads on him. Watch the end of this play. Atwater is a big hitter. The Raiders, fourth down and two yards, and they are going to go for it. The crowd is on its feet now at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. A gamble early in the second half by Archell in L.A. Schrader in trouble into the end zone behind Ethan Horton. And Denver holds. Good pursuit of the quarterback, though, by Simon Fletcher. Simon Fletcher put... Instant pressure on Schrader. If he would have had more time, it was a play that they wanted to call where they bring they bring Schrader outside even in the run or throw the pass, and it's an incomplete pass. A pretty good gamble. The heat got to the Raiders. They come up empty. Denver Broncos have it back. First and ten of their own four-yard line. So the gamble, maybe not the most judicious decision, but Archell and the Raiders does not pay off. As the tight end is wide open for John Elway. Orson Mobley out across the 10. Let's look back on that play. The fourth and two situation. Back at the four-yard line. Well, we were going to take a look at it. <laughs> Here it is. You see both the backs on the radar offense going this way. Schrader coming this way. Then you'll see Mecklenburg here. Atwater here. Break through. And put the pressure on Schrader. He had to throw the ball before he wanted to. Had to throw it a little bit behind the receiver. And they didn't convert that fourth down. Bobby Humphrey gets the first down. On his first carry of the second half, just barely across the 15-yard line. Ricky Ellison, the inside linebacker, combining on the hit with the strong safety, Mike Harden. The Raider defense has been playing very well, so in thinking about that gamble, you think if you don't get the first down, as we look at Marcus Allen putting a little ice on his head, right where he got those 10 stitches at halftime, but if you don't get the first down, then you hope your defense can hold and you still got pretty good field for the position. Humphrey, starting in motion, gets the pitch. Getting blocks to the outside. Not much yardage available, though. Out to the 18, near the 19, for about four. Second Mike, year out of Alabama. Mike Harden, the safety who played so long for the Denver Broncos, coming up to make that stop. He is very, very familiar with this Denver offense, having practiced, having probably played against this offense more than anybody in football every day in practice. And any time that you leave one team, the owners on playing them is you want to show them that they made a mistake. So he is one fired-up football player against these Broncos today. Second and just about seven in the play action for Elway. Townsend got him with one hand. Greg Townsend with a sack for the Raiders. Before we look at that play, let's go to Bob Costas for an update in our studios in New York. Joel, he was the number one pick in the entire draft, and here's a look at Jeff George's first official NFL touchdown pass. The great veteran, formerly of the New England Patriots, Stanley Morgan makes a leaping catch, 25-yard TD hookup, and at Buffalo, Indianapolis creeps to within six at 16-10. Joel? All right, Bob Ahmad, just what you were alluding to, that great defensive pressure hanging off if they can hold on third down now. They should get field position out of it. Four wide receivers setting up for Elway, throwing out of his own end zone. And it's intercepted! Touchdown, Jerry Robinson! trying to 
get to Steve Sewell. The great pressure paid off. And the defense scores the first points of the day for the L.A. Raiders. Former NFL Rookie of the Year with the Philadelphia Eagles back in 1979. Played his college ball right in this field for the UCLA Bruins. Jeff Jager in for the point after he drives. As the Raiders take their first lead of the afternoon. We'll be right back to the Red Hot Coliseum in Los Angeles with Los Angeles on top by a point. A great play here by Howie Long, who will get double teamed but break through the pressure, put all the pressure on Elway, which will cause him to throw this interception. Watch Howie Long break through two guys, three guys, puts the pressure on Elway, who lets it go a little soon. Jerry Robinson standing right there and prances into the end zone. Big play by Jerry Robinson, who has been rejuvenated with this with these new young players that the Raiders have. He said it's like playing on the Raiders of old with these guys flying around the field. And yeah, they do need some leadership and they're getting it from Jerry Robinson. Sammy Winder and Elton Montgomery waiting for the kickoff from Jeff Jagger. A very short one. will be taken by an up man. Across the 35 to the 40. And bringing it back, Melvin Bratton, the fullback in his second year out of Miami. Now, here is some great linebacker play. Jerry Robinson watching the eyes of Elway. He'll back up and watch Elway all the way, make the interception here, and then take it in for the TD. Watch Jerry Robinson. He's watching Elway the entire way. Just as if they were playing catch. So the Raiders have the lead with 7 minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Elway now only 4 of 17 of the passing department. Bobby Humphrey gets the call and Greg Townsend gets the stop. Greg Townsend, a man that they sent down to a training camp down in Houston to lose weight, went down there and put on 15 pounds of solid muscle, <laughs> and he is a nightmare on anybody trying to block him. I mean, he first break and broke into the league, all they talked about is pass rushing abilities, but he has turned into an all-around defensive end. Townsend led the AFC in sacks two years ago. He was fifth in the AFC last season. Wrapped up Bobby Humphrey. He's now got only 22 yards on 11 carries. Then a man that rushed for better than 1,150 yards last year. Second and close to seven for Elway. But he is now two for his last 11. He hits his wide receiver, Mark Jackson, and he's got a first down for the Broncos. Jackson found that little seam. Elway's a guy you keep quiet for a minute, but when he gets noisy, he, <laughs> that's when he really causes a problem. I don't think you ever shut out a guy like Elway. It's only happened a couple times in Super Bowl situations, but any other time, once he gets rolling, he is always dangerous. They're in Raider territory at the 47. Archell mentioned to us yesterday, he said, Elway is going to get his place. He's just trying to hold him to a minimum. He's going to make things happen, though. Humphrey, Bratton in the backfield. Play action for Elway on first and ten. He's got room to roam, but there's a flag in the air, normally where you see a holding call. He's out of bounds at the 40-yard line after a scramble for seven. defensive holding on the Raiders. And will also bring an automatic first down. Holding prior to the pass, number 50 defense, first down. Ricky Ellison just Ricky Ellison right here, he will try to cover this back here. He can't cover him. I guess if you don't want to get beat for a touchdown, this is what you do. Watch Ricky Ellison. Well, I can't cover him. Maybe I'll just grab a hold of him and tag along for the ride. It is a first down for the Broncos at the 42-yard line of the Raiders. Humphrey on the misdirection. Throwing the ball and overthrowing Bratton, who was tangled up going downfield with Gary Lewis, the cornerback. Tom Benson was coming in on Bobby Humphrey. 
little razzle dazzle from the Broncos. Anytime you do things like this, and Dan Reeves is, you know, the Dallas Cowboys used to do a lot of stuff like that, and it wasn't so much razzle dazzle as really a part of their uh, play call. It's a play that they practice a lot on in practice. They use it a lot. It's not just something that they go, let's see if we can trick them. Yeah, it's an actually a good play. They spend a lot of time on it, and it almost worked. Second and ten for the 42 for the Broncos. As Sewell splits out as a wide receiver. Elway with time, but Howie Long supplying pressure. Elway with the speed to get outside. Makes something out of nothing all the way down to the 37. As you see, Howie Long chasing him all the way out of bounds. Let's check the Hurts 10-minute ticker once again. Finals, you expected some surprises as well, like the Tampa Bay score. Phoenix is yet to win for Joe Bugle. Didn't win during the preseason. They dropped their final six games of last year's regular season. Many are feeling that Phoenix will supplant the Dallas Cowboys in the cellar this year in the NFC's Eastern Division. Big third down now for the Broncos. Third and five at the 37 of Los Angeles. Elway underthrows his man. And he had him. He wanted to go to Vance Johnson. There are flags down, though. And actually, it turns out to be a break for Elway and the Broncos. A delay of game, so the play never officially started. They'll get another crack at it now on third down. Instead, it'll be third and ten. Ricky Mateel in there for once a few times this afternoon. Four receivers for Elway out of the shotgun. Over the middle, intercepted. Picked off by former Bronco Mike Harden. Elway looking for an deal. And Mike Harden told us yesterday that he, during the course of practice, he would play so many games with John Elway, trying to read his eyes, trying to figure out which way he's going, and he felt very confident that he was up on that. You see Elway looking downfield, Harden trying to play Elway, and the ball thrown a little bit in front. Harden makes the interception. The Raiders have it back, leading by a point. He was released by the Denver Broncos last September, promptly picked up by the L.A. Raiders. He led the Broncos in interceptions five straight seasons. And he's got his first interception of the year. John Elway has been picked off twice now on the only two series that he has that had the ball in the second half this afternoon. Napoleon McCallum, his first carry of the day. Been out of football since 1986. Takes it across the 35 to the 36. Another look at the Hurt 10-minute ticker. Shout out for the Bears. Well, the Packers won at home. Kansas City by three, also at home. And the other finals we've discussed. Some others still in progress. At Cleveland, a tight one between the Browns and the Steelers. And Miami on a roll. Right back in it in the third quarter in Foxborough. Second and six for Trader and the Raiders. Can't get away. Second sack of the day for Warren Powers, the fourth overall for the Denver Broncos. All the way back to the 25-yard line. It appeared that Jace Raider had a lot of time. He couldn't find an open receiver. You'll see him set here. The offensive line doing a very good job. He just can't find anybody downfield, and Powers... So the heads up play trips him up. A lot of times when you have the type of offense that the Raiders have where you're always looking way downfield, it puts a lot of pressure on that offensive line. They're down at 18 now for Los Angeles, their own 25. Pocket starting to collapse, and so does Schrader. Again, Powers in there along with Dennis Smith and Steve Atwater. And the Denver defense coming through. Fifth sack now for the Broncos. 
talking to there's Wade Phillips that orchestrated that sack right there. The defensive coordinator who has changed a few thought patterns up there in Denver. He says, I wanted our defense to be simple enough that if we get a player in the first year that had a lot of talent, I wanted him to be able to play. I didn't want to have the guy be around for two or three years and have to learn the defense. Whatever he can do, we'll find a way to play him and let him do it. Jeff Gossett coming once again. Lance Johnson ready. Barring a turnover, for the Broncos should have outstanding field position. Good punt though by Gossett. Johnson at his 30. And down at the 31. A 51-yard punt. And the first one down there for the Raiders. There you see the offensive line coach, Kim Hilton, doing his version of the Telestrator. His is a little bit more, um, <laughs> a little bit better than mine, I think. That's Kim Hilton, used to be at the Houston Oilers, doing a fine job out here at the Raiders. Melvin Bratton on the reception to the 35-yard line. First and 10 call for John Elway. Lewis and Benson defending for L.A. Coming over, you had to expect a close game between these two. Five of the last 11 have gone into overtime, and eight of the last 12 have been separated by three points or less. And this game nowhere near over. See the fellows over there trying to find a cool breeze somewhere. You can tell when it's really hot. You don't want to sit real next to anybody. You want to try to find an empty spot so you can get all that fresh air you can. Elway with time. Has it deflected at the line. Wanted to go for the tight end, Clarence K. And it looked like Ricky Ellison got in there. Maybe even Greg Townsend got his hand on the ball. Howie Long and, and Bob Golick and Scott Davis are putting so much pressure in the middle that they are keeping Elway away from throwing that ball straight over the middle. Watch Howie Long in the middle. Just quick off the ball and coming, still coming at the quarterback, but always keeping that pressure on him. A lot of time, a hurry is better than a sack because in a hurry, you get a chance to get an interception. Third and six now. At the 35-yard line, Elway has his man who fumbles it. Loose ball picked up by the Raiders. Down the sideline. It's a touchdown for Terry McDaniel. When you talk about the team speed of this L.A. Raider team, you talk about Willie Galt, Tim Brown, Sam Grady. Well, the fourth person on that relay team that we talked about early would be this fella right here, hey! Terry McDaniel. Once he picks that ball up, he just distances himself from the know. offense. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Terry McDaniel. Came into camp a little bit hurt, had a pulled muscle, but with that little quick dash there, you can tell he's healed. Jeff Jager in for the extra point attempt. Raiders trying to go up by eight points. And Jager is right on target. Another look at the completion and fumble. Vance Johnson. Johnny Elway here. Finds Vance Johnson over the middle. Vance Johnson makes the catch and he's wrapped up. Just as he goes down, the ball pops loose. Eddie Anderson knocks it loose. Now watch McDaniel as he picks it up. And he just is in full stride, full speed within two steps. And just runs away from everybody. Another look at this. Vance Johnson not able to get the ball into his body. Elway puts it right there. Vance Johnson with the catch. Now watch Eddie Anderson come in, knocks it loose, and stays on Vance Johnson so he can't reach for the fumble. Now McDaniel picks it up and off to the races he goes. That is a big play. 
in in trying to turn your season around. When you got to have big plays, you to learn how to learn how to win. You don't have to always score points with the offense. And the Raiders have scored two touchdowns today with their defense. Terry McDaniel, the ninth player selected in the first round of the 1988 draft out of Tennessee. John Elway will still be heard from. There's a lot of time to go in this game. The Raiders doing a heck of a job converting these turnovers, two or three of them into touchdowns. That's winning football. Jager kicking it away to Winder, and Elton Montgomery will take it to the seven-yard line. Montgomery breaking tackles. Out across the 30 to the 31. Well, last year, it was the Denver Broncos that dominated in the takeaway category in the AFC. At least so far this afternoon. The opportunists have been the L.A. Raiders capitalizing on those two mistakes. And John Elway, 7 for 22, 69 yards, two interceptions, but he's got a lot more bullets in his belt. <laughs> I guarantee you, the Raiders will not be able to let up on him because he just keeps coming at you. Broncos not able to get their offense in sync either, just like the Raiders in the first half. Sewell and Humphrey in the backfield. On first and 10 from the 31. Elway with time. Has a man, but overthrows Vance Johnson. He was open momentarily before Eddie Anderson, the safety, came over. Flags down on the play. Well, he wasn't really open. He was covered short and long. And that you can't throw the ball through the short man. That was Eddie Anderson, who was underneath. You really, there was no angle to get the ball into the receiver. Preliminary signal has it going against Denver. So far, everything has gone against the Broncos in the second half. Holding number 67 offense, still far stand. They call it on Doug Wydell. You will see Lionel Washington cover him short, Eddie Anderson club cover him deep. And watch the receiver here. It appears that he's open, but he's in a slot where Elway cannot get the ball to him. There's a man in front of him, there's a man behind him. That has to be a perfect throw to get that in there. Vance Johnson covered. It's outside the 20, where it's first and 20. Moving pocket for John Elway with all day and has a man, Mark Jackson, who loses it as he hits the deck. It'll be completion, no fumble for a first down to the 42-yard line. Mark Jackson showing a lot of concentration here. When you go up to that ball over the middle, you know you're going to be hit. And he's pounded by a linebacker, but that ball... It looked like it came out on the way down. As we... You know, it looks the same going forwards and backwards. It looks like... It oh, very well, close, knee, very close. His knee was down, though. Yeah, we have the ability to watch it in slow motion where the referee, the official, cannot see it that slow. So the motion man on first down. So with the completion. And he's out of bounds at the 47-yard line on a gain of five. Let's check up once again. The Hurts 10 minute ticker. Still a seven point lead for the Browns in the third quarter. Same margin for the Jets over the Bengals. Tight one between Buffalo and Indianapolis. Four point advantage for New England over Miami. And San Diego winning on the road at Dallas in the third. Second and five for Elway and the Broncos. Pressure coming, wide open, it's Steve Sewell, he's got the first down, inside L.A. territory to the 45-yard line. Steve Sewell, an all-around back who gives the Broncos so many ways of using him. He's able to, anytime they have him isolated on a linebacker, they figure like they have a, they have a mismatch because Sewell actually could play wide receiver, he's playing fullback, he can play in the slot. When you have a chance to do all that with one man, you get a chance to isolate him on a particular defender because you don't bring in a bunch of new receivers. The defense doesn't bring the nickel in, so you get Sewell isolated up on linebackers or safeties. Either one, 
it is a mismatch. He is one of the reasons that Denver Broncos go with only four running backs as opposed to five like so many other teams because he is so multi-talented. That's the end of the third quarter. A quarter dominated by L.A. Be right back after these messages from your local station. Looking at ice being applied to the leg of Willie Gold, who is apparently okay, maybe just preventive, preventative ice, but he's so important to that Raider big play offense. First play of the fourth quarter, first and ten for the Broncos at the 45 of L.A., and it's Mark Jackson pulling away from the defensive back inside the 10-yard line. Got away from Eddie Anderson all the way down to the four. 41 yards on the completion. Mark Jackson here on Terry Lewis will just run a pattern all the way down, push him back with his speed and bring it back. And Elway will put that ball right on the money. I mentioned Elway having many more bullets in his, in his belt. And here's one of them you see being fired right here. Very nice pattern by Mark Jackson who makes a nice run after the catch. Best drive of the second half. No question about that for the Denver Broncos, but they come up confused for the offensive line. Have to use one of those precious three timeouts. So they stop the clock with 14.31 left in the fourth quarter. First and goal for the Broncos. They trail by eight. They've got it inside the five. L.A. throwing. Maybe not. Yes, he has a man wide open, and it's batted down. He had Sewell in the end zone. Coming up, Dan Land, an extra defensive back in his second year out of Albany State. An excellent play by Dan Land. Elway floating out to the right side, trying to find a receiver. It's just a naked bootleg. Watch him. He's taking his time, trying to find somebody. Now watch Land time his jump perfectly and just knock this ball down. Great play by Dan Land. Steve Zool is coming across the back of the end zone. Was available. Most likely saved a touchdown. Second and goal for Denver was Sewell in motion. Elway has the tight end. Mobley can't hang on. Same play, same young man involved. Dan Land, number 25, covering Mobley, but this ball was really thrown a little bit too high and and out of the back of the end zone. Had he even caught the ball, I think he would have been out of the end zone. Here you'll watch Elway, another rollout, same kind of a bootleg. You see Mobley open right now. And as Elway lets his ball go, even had he caught that ball, his first foot comes in out of bounds. So now it's a third and goal situation. Dan Land came up with a couple of big plays. Broncos today, only one of 10 in third down conversions. the shotgun. Elway has it batted away. Howie Long. Long's got it. And it's another turnover. The fourth of the second half picked up by the LA Raiders. We have been talking about the relentless pursuit of Howie Long all day. It pays off right there. Raiders get it back as it appeared the Broncos were ready to make it a tight one. Talking all day about the relentless pursuit of Howie Long who never gives up. Right here he gets a hand on the ball, knocks it out, and then picks it up. Now Howie figures nobody's touched me. I think I'll take off running. But once again you see Elway trying to find a receiver. Howie Long reaches and bats the ball away. Howie picks it up and takes off running like a bull in a china shop going the wrong way. And this is... What happens after you run three or four yards and with a with a fumble pick up, <laughs> you gotta go over and get that oxygen. First and ten, Marcus Allen leaping over a would-be tackler. Breathing room out to the 16 near the 17. Marcus Allen is instant offense. Anytime he's in the game, he just don't know how to how to play him. You know, if he's gonna run the ball, is he gonna he's an excellent blocker? He may be the best all-around back in football. And there's Howie Long, who doesn't want to hear anything about about now. All he wants is some cold towels. And, you know, it's funny when you get tired like that, you can't hear. He doesn't know what they're saying. 
temperature. No idea. Temperature down in the field today is over 100 degrees on the floor of the LA Coliseum. Second and three, close to the 17. Marcus Allen with a first down. Out to the 21-yard line. Updating those scores once again. Atlanta continues to pull away while the Jets go up by 10. The new New York Jets. New England still maintaining Bruce that four-point margin. An eight-point lead for the Los Angeles Raiders. And don't forget the Denver Broncos had to use that timeout. Early in the fourth quarter, they've got two remaining now. Marcus Allen stays in the backfield. Dejection on the sideline. Mark Jackson, John Elway. Marcus Allen, four carries, a total of 39 yards. The most productive out of the Raider backfield this afternoon. His number is called again. Nothing doing this time, though. Only a yard, the 22. When you talk about knowing how to win, that's finding a big play any way you can find it. And the Raiders just dodged a bullet by Howie Long coming in, knocking that ball down because the Broncos were knocking at the door. Marcus Allen saw very, very little time during the preseason. Held out of camp early, came in late, and had a slat hamstring pull. But very effective this afternoon, especially in the second half. Steve Smith held it to the line of scrimmage. Knifing through is Carl Mecklenburg. Howie Long still not over that. Not over that. And he said he's been playing so hard and it's so hot. The doctors are down there. They've just taken his blood pressure to make sure everything's okay. Easy day to become dehydrated. And that's probably the case with Howie Long. Third and long for the Raiders. Third and eight at their own 23. Allen stays in the backfield with Steve Smith. Allen gets it. Way short of the first down, though. Steve Atwater in on the stop out of the secondary Denver Broncos. So the Broncos have had the ball four times in the second half. Those four possessions have resulted in two interceptions and two fumbles. And they're ready now to get it back for a fifth time. But they are trailing by more than a touchdown. Plenty of time left, though. 10.45 in the fourth. Gossett ready to boot it away. With Vance Johnson. On the run. Returnable tight for Vance Johnson. It doesn't get much. Although the Broncos... Because with a short 35-yard punt, when we come back, we'll have outstanding field position at their own 45-yard line. Howie Long, we've just found out, maybe a possible concussion. He was hit on the jaw on the return of that fumble. Elway stumbles on his drop back. Fires it from Mobley in the tight end. Has the completion for six yards to the Raider 49-yard line. We welcome you back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Joel Myers and Ahmad Rashad with 10 minutes and 10 seconds. Left in the fourth quarter, Lionel Washington, the injured Raider. Looks like he's got a... Something wrong with his hip. Lionel Washington on the bottom of the screen. Watch him come in for this tackle on Mobley. Gets it. It's a very nice tackle. And then just, you know, sometimes you can land kind of funny. You Some kind of way that, that you've landed, you know, many times before, and all of a sudden one time you... It may be a cramp even. I mean, you get so dehydrated in games like this that you'll get cramps like that. And they cramp in some weird parts of your body, places you never thought you had muscles. And it appears that that's what Lionel Washington had, a cramp in his hip bone, which is a new one on me. Although I've been dehydrated and had things cramp up that I didn't know could possibly cramp. Washington came to the Raiders from the Cardinals in a deal back in 1987. has been a starter in their secondary ever since. Broncos down by eight, looking at a second and four in Raider territory. Elway now, 12 of 29. 
for 150 yards. He's also thrown two interceptions. Melvin Bratton, the big fullback out of the University of Miami, near the first down marker. Number 71, Bill Paquel in for Howie Long, and the Broncos ran right at him. The Raiders feel like they've got just a, a stalwart in Bill Paquel because he can play so many positions. He's got great lateral movement and can play tackle or end, and they don't get a big drop-off in that defensive front and they have the kill in there. Gary Kubiak coming in. On the third and short, the Raiders got caught, though, in some very late substitutions. So the Raiders had to call a timeout. They had too many men on the field. Well, that, that conference you see over there with all those white shirts, they're all gathered around John Elway. Icing him down. We must remind you that it is 100 degrees on that field down there. The team with the added depth eventually should come out on top. We've just received word, heat prostration for John Elway. Steve Antonopoulos there. There's not a lot that you can do. Try to get fluids in as quick as possible. John, they, they tell us that he's hyperventilating, but he's, you see he's, he's having a discussion down there, so they seem to have it under control. The Raiders are coming out of camp very deep on their offensive and defensive lines. We saw Bill McKell take over for Howie Long. They can also use Mike Wise off the bench, Mike Charles as well. I, I understand we had a thermometer we were going to put on the field, but I also understand that it broke. <laughs> or, did, or did it melt? I think it blew up through the top. Third and inches, and Kubiak on the sneak has the first down inside the 45. Gary Kubiak in his eighth year out of Texas A&M. So the Denver Broncos only go with two quarterbacks. It is such a helpless feeling to be dehydrated or be in a position like Elway is in now in a football game because you you don't have the energy to even get out of the way and that's when injuries start to happen it's such a tough game still in motion on first and ten design roll in the pocket Howie Long's back in there giving chase no Howie Long is not as it's thrown and it's complete to Mark Jackson it was 79 not 75 Bob Goldick who was after the quarterback Jackson with the completion well, that's pretty good strategy by Kubiak. If he can make 79 Bob Golick chase him from sideline to sideline, it won't be long that Golick will be joining him over there on the sideline trying to get some water. But a great pursuit there. Watch Kubiak rolls out. And watch Golick number 79 that just keeps pursuing him. Now, Golick is not a very small fella. <laughs> like I say, on a hot day like this, it takes a toll on the big guys. Clock continues to roll under eight minutes left. First and ten at the 26 of Los Angeles. Play action for Gary Kubiak with time and a completion to Vance Johnson inside the 20. Flag down on the late hit. Ricky Ellison was there, so was Tom Benson. Tom Benson, I think, was a little late. They had already knocked Vance Johnson down. And as he jumped up to try to keep running... Unnecessary roughness call against Tom Benson. Now you see Vance Johnson's down. He stands up and Benson unnecessarily roughs him. It's always so strange, Lane. We can't understand that. You know, I, how can you say somebody else did? <laughs> He's the only guy that hit him. More importantly for the Denver Broncos, they've got it first and goal now at the Los Angeles nine yard line. Seven and a half minutes left. Kubiak, who's done a fine job since taking over. Sammy Winder wrapped up in the backfield. Howie Long is back in there. Comes up with a big play. Howie Long is now, when, when people say he's a football player, you could say that about Howie Long. Howie Long 
with a possible concussion. He's tired, hot, winded, and there he comes back. He only knows one way to play, and that's just all out relentless. Let's not forget the L.A. offense has yet to score a point today. The two touchdowns coming on an interception return by Jerry Robinson and also a 42-yard fumble return by the defensive back, Terry McDaniel. Kubiak on second and goal. Has problems. Finds his receiver still, who stays on his feet. Mark Jackson to the five. Great effort by the former Purdue Boilermaker. Mark Jackson with a, just a little pattern where you come up underneath the other receivers. Little crossing pattern. You see Kubiak backing up, looking for Mark Jackson the entire way. Fires it to Jackson. A great catch here in traffic. And now watch him keep his feet. Still running, twisting. Very good play by Mark Jackson. Third and goal. With the ball at the LA five. Under six minutes remaining. As Bratton goes in motion. Humphrey nowhere on the carry. Bob Golick, no. Bill Bikel. Some fresh bodies coming off that Raider bench, paying off in the fourth quarter. Bill Bikel, a starter on almost any other team in the National Football League, comes in as a backup here. Watch Bikel in the middle of your screen, number 71. Just gets right by everybody and makes the tackle. He's almost in the backfield during the handoff. Now, the Raiders making wholesale changes, showing that they've got great depth in their defensive line. And you see Elway sitting in front of the air conditioner there. Treadwell in for a 24-yard attempt. It's good. And now the Denver Broncos are within five. Third field goal of the afternoon, and it's a five-point game. It is a simmering September afternoon in Los Angeles, and it has taken its toll on players from both teams. Welcome back. I'm Joel Myers, Ahmad Rashad, and 5.05 remaining into the game. One of the most important offensive uh, opportunities now for the L.A. Raiders. Well, the Raiders, with their style, they've just got to keep coming at they got to keep coming at Denver because this is not a game where you can set on the ball and hope that you can run the clock out. you got to try to keep putting points on the board. And Gary Kubiak, for everybody outside of Denver, let me tell you, this young man can play quarterback. So the Broncos are still dangerous with Kubiak in a quarterback. Very, very important offensive series coming up now for the Raiders. Even if they can't get points, they want to hang on to the ball a good three, three and a half, even four minutes. The kick is on its way. And it's taken by Jamie Holland. Holland with a good return out to the 30-yard line. Before we come back to the Coliseum, it's time for an update. Bob Costas in NFL Live. Joel, a few moments ago, Cincinnati trailed by 10. Then Boomer Esiason threw a touchdown pass to James Brooks. And right after that, what was Ken O'Brien thinking? He seemingly makes a beeline for the end zone. David Fulcher sacks him there for the safety since he's within one with about six minutes left. Joel? All right, Bob. A five-point contest with 4.55 left. And now the pressure on the Denver defense to get the ball back to their offensive unit. This is only the fourth offensive series of the second half for the L.A. Raiders at their own 29-yard line. Nothing on the carry. Second and nine, the ball of the 30-yard line. Clock rolling under 420 left. Schrader appears to be audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. Nobody there. A busted play, and Schrader makes something out of it. Getting about four. Third, and a short five. Bell in the backfield with Smith. And Schrader is throwing. The short one for Fernandez, complete for the first down to the 42. Pulled it off in front of Tyrone Braxton. There's the biggest enemy right now for the Denver Broncos, the clock. Broncos have two timeouts remaining. Just like the Raiders. These two have been involved in four openers. The Broncos have taken the last three. 
The most recent in 86, a 38-36 win. Denver fans won't forget back at mile high. Steve Smith. Brought down by Atwater, but he gets three on the carry to the 46. You've just joined us, John Elway had to leave the game with about 10 minutes remaining due to heat prostration. Gary Kubiak has taken over. This is a very helpless feeling for John Elway, who would love to be back in that game playing, but there's just nothing he can do. Second and seven. A 14-9 Raider lead. Steve Smith weaving his way out of the backfield, breaking tackles. Close to the midfield strike. Brought down by Michael Brooks. The Raiders have been trying to find a ground attack the entire game, and if they find it now, it could be the icing on the cake here. We have reached the two-minute warning in Los Angeles. The heat continues to be a factor. We'll find out if the Broncos are when we return. It's one of the best rivalries in the NFL. And right now, the Los Angeles Raiders enjoying a five-point advantage over the Denver Broncos. Well, they expected about 55,000. Attendance at the Coliseum today, 54,206. Just a couple of miles down the Harbor Freeway, 50,000 on hand at the Dodger game as they take on the Cincinnati Reds. And just a few more miles over to the beach, probably about 300,000. <laughs> Sunning in the sun <laughs> Another look at scores around the NFL. Cleveland with a field goal now has a 10-point lead on the Steelers at home. A runaway for Atlanta in Jerry Glanville's debut. And a big come from behind in the fourth for Cincinnati. Still time left, though, at Riverfront. Buffalo up by nine over Indianapolis. Miami still trailing by four. Well, that's the margin with San Diego on top of Dallas. We're ready for the biggest third down of the game. It is third and just about three. The ball just short of the midfield stripe. John Elway getting ready to come back in. If Denver can hold L.A. on third and three. Smith and Allen in the backfield. Marcus Allen gets the call and doesn't get the first down. He's not even close. Denver has just called their final timeout. Stopping the clock with a minute and 52 seconds. And it really would be amazing. It appears he will be coming back. Dan Reeves. Trying to get some strategy going because they have no more timeouts. But in a quarterback like John Elway, who knows how to work that clock, they still have a lot of time. He looks so listless. Looks so void of energy on the bench. It's amazing he could get back up with the helmet on and even make the attempt. Well, it's amazing what athletes do at the snap of the ball. We saw Howie Long look like he was never going to play football again in life. <laughs> and came back in and made great plays. So a lot of times you just let it lie until you can gather up and get it going for that one play. One play at a time. So now Vance Johnson will get ready for the punt from Jeff Gossett. As the Broncos will get one final try down by only five. Been a productive day for Gossett. No pressure. So he's set up for the return, and Johnson has it at the 15. Out across the 20. And he goes to the 22, close to the 23. Seven-yard return after the 35-yard punt. And here comes John Elway. A situation like this where they need a touchdown, they need John Elway. They need that big gun in there. The guy that has the possibility of making it happen in one play. 
Raiders defense has been tough all day. They've got to just put it together one more time. Raider defense has really done it in the trenches today. Minute 43 left. Elway out of the shotgun. Two wide receivers to each side. And still in the backfield. Elway has time and has. Vance Johnson tries to save time and does so. Getting to the sideline. After the completion for about six yards to the 29. Heads up play by Johnson. Saves a good 20 seconds. This is a drill that every team in the National Football League spends a lot of time on, that two-minute drill, where everybody should know exactly what they're supposed to do. You cannot have mental errors if you hope to be successful during this period of the game. Second and four. Elway hit as he throws it. Wanted to go to Michael Young. Oh, he was sacked. And they say he is sacked. He was in the grass. But Greg Townsend. Greg Townsend. That physical fitness routine he did down in Houston said he used to have to run up a 45-foot hill that was at a 45-degree angle many, many times. It's paying off now in this, this game that he just keeps coming on. And it's also, it looks like Fakel might have been the first one to get to him. It's now third and 11, back of the 22 of Denver. Trips to the near side. Elway rolling to that side, but he's shut off by Howie Long, and Long's got him again. Villanova. Howie Long, left side of your screen, just keeps coming. He is unblockable. He is right on Elway before you can even look downfield. Fourth and 19. Last try for Elway and the Broncos. Out of his own end zone. Way short of the first down. On the incompletion to Mark Jackson, who couldn't hang on anyway. So they begin to celebrate for good now at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And no question, the star of the game, number 75. So the Raiders do it on a day where their offense did not produce a point. Get it back at the Denver 14-yard line. 14 is the magic number right now for the Raiders. And Denver cannot stop the clock. So one snap for Jay Schrader and the Los Angeles Raiders. And it will become official. The Raiders will win their opener at home. Well, Art Shell has yet to lose as the head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders. He is a perfect 7-0. Five sacks for the Raiders. Two belong to Howie Long. The other three to Greg Townsend. The Raiders wore him down defensively. Shell said before this game that the Broncos were where they wanted to be and they and the Raiders just took a giant step trying to get back right in that championship caliber level. Art Shell was very happy with the work of his team during the preseason, said he, they were flying around, they just didn't know how good they were and after playing a team like Denver they would find out more today because they were playing a championship team, a team that they beat. And Art Shell's got to be very happy about today. What has to impress you a lot about the Raider defensive hey, unit, it appears they're a very deep group. They have a lot of people on the defensive front and in the secondary as well. And a very experienced group of linebackers. Well, the mark of a good team is, is if, if your offense isn't playing well, your defense has got to do it for you. And there you see Howie Long 
who had such a great day today, and I asked him yesterday if he preferred playing tackle or end. He just, listen, I show up to practice, I show up to the games, they tell me which one I play, and I just play it. And boy, he played today. Let's check out those finals around the National Football League. Shout out for Mike Ditka and the Chicago Bears. The L.A. Rams losing their opener on the road to the Green Bay Packers. Without the magic man, the Green Bay Packers. Right. Dilwick started and went the whole way at quarterback. Kansas City by a field goal. Over your old team of mob, the Minnesota Vikings. Tampa Bay taking on Detroit, one of the pleasant developments during the preseason, but the Lions fell flat in their opener at home, losing by 17. Tampa Asics. Bay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Joe, but Tampa Bay quietly putting together a very good team down there. Easy win for Washington over Phoenix. And game still going on. Cleveland up by 10 at home. A runaway for Atlanta in Glanville's debut. The Jets still trailing by two to the Bengals at Cincinnati. Buffalo late in that game. Winning by nine. While Miami now has taken the lead over New England. San Diego still clinging to that four-point advantage. Down in Irving, Texas. So the final once again here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The Raiders beating the Broncos by five. 